Doctor. Doctor. One moment, please. Nurse, I need 20 cc's of sodium pentothal. What? Wait a second. What the heck is happening? Sodium pentothal, which is a type of sedative. The nurse picks it up with her mouth, which is not sterile, and the nurse has no arms. Okay, the doctor's got a surgical mask on, but obviously the nose is exposed, so that's not helping. I'll be right with you right after I inject this man with a long needle. Oh, man. <laughs> sick. I always get the length of the needle scares people. The length of the needle has nothing to do with how the shot's going to go. It is actually the gauge of the needle or the diameter that's worse. So the bigger the diameter, the more painful it's going to be. So even if it's a very long needle, as long as the gauge is small, it's not going to hurt very much. There, there, young man. Oh. Medical science is nothing okay. to be afraid of. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think you're hitting the bone. Oh, what? Well, randomly. Uh. Yes, I can oh. have a needle scraping against the bone inside. Randomly sticking inside his abdomen, that doesn't occur, okay? That, you're going to put that in an IV. You're not going to put that in an IM injection or intramuscular injection. You'll put it intravenously so it works. We do have sometimes where there's procedures where we stick needles into the tissue where, yes, you can actually feel the bone. It is a blind procedure, and we actually will stick the needle in knowing our landmarks, but you will occasionally hit the bone. When we do hit the bone, it actually doesn't hurt the patient, but you'll able to know, okay, I don't need to go in that spot. I need to adjust where I'm going. Same idea. Okay, Kenny, I'll bet you a hundred dollars you can't light oh, no. a fart on fire. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lighting farts on fire, probably not the best idea. I've never done this personally in my own life, but I've seen many clips online where you try to get in position, light it on fire. It's not a good idea. Pants go up in flames. You can singe any hairs that are in the area and people actually get lit on fire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he's on fire, obviously. Okay. Gosh. Okay. Do not try to beat somebody with a stick. Stop, drop, and roll is the appropriate way to put out a fire if your clothes are on fire. And he got put out by salt. And of course, they killed Kenny at South Park. Load that IV with 70 cc's of sodium pentothal. Vacuum. This hospital loves the sedative, which is actually appropriate in this setting. If somebody is totally burned, you always worry about not just the burns on the outside, but burns inside. So if you have soot in your nose or in your mouth, or you have singed hairs, a lot of times as an emergency room doctor, we're going to intubate you early, which is to put you on the ventilator, because if we wait too long, the amount of swelling can occur inside the soft tissue of your throat, and then we won't be able to get a tube in, and we need emergently to cut open your neck and put the tube in. So we don't want to get there. We've done it before, and it's not pretty sight. It is a last ditch effort. Try to untangle his trachea and esophagus. They're trying to untangle his trachea and esophagus. Sometimes if somebody is so burned, they wouldn't be twisted, but things can melt together. That's how horrible burns could be. We have precious little time left, people. We're gonna lose him soon. The emergency department is what I do for a living, right? And you got people freaking out everywhere. Those people, we put them in other rooms. We kick them out of the room. The emergency setting, we're professionals. We know what we're doing. We're calm and collected. Everybody has a role. The doctor is the conductor, say, of that room. And everybody has a specific role and job. And we work in unison. There's no chaos. There's no screaming. It's calm, quiet. And we do things very particular to help save someone's life and to give them best care possible. We need to zap this quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He wanted to zap the heart that he ripped out in the microwave. No, you will liquefy that, but I like that there's a random potato just sitting in the emergency department. But somehow they... He accidentally replaced your heart with a baby. <laughs> they actually used the potato to be a substitute for his heart. That is hilarious. Heart transplants are very cool, very intricate. Literally, you take the heart out of the chest. You have the blood supply being pumped through another machine, keeping the person alive while you're then putting the new heart back in to reconnect all the major vessels. Hat off to all the cardiothoracic surgeons that have the skill to be able to do that. It doesn't happen in 20 seconds like this occurred. <coughs> Come on, again with these kids, they're always getting into trouble. Yeah, dude. What the Butter. heck? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, dude, it's stuck in his eye. What the hell did you do? Oh my gosh. Why are these kids throwing stars? In the middle of winter, shouldn't they be having like snowball fights? Obviously, leave it in for now till you get to be seen by a medical professional. When you actually injure the eye like this, the concern about this is that you're having the vitreous basically flow out of the eye and it's hard to replace that. It hurts! It hurts! Oh man, we are in Yeah, trouble. definitely hurts. 
I can't even imagine the kind of pain that a puncture wound or a laceration could be to the eye. Okay, okay, calm down, butters. It'll be okay. You don't understand what my mom will do to me if she finds out I was playing with weapons. Kids' first reaction is always, am I gonna get in trouble? With this type of injury, you need to tell your parents or you need to get to the hospital ASAP. Oh, uh, no! Butters. Stop with pulling stuff out. If you have an impaled object into your body, these objects are potentially tamponading or blocking either a major blood vessel. In those moments, yes, at the hospital, we do take these objects out, but you have medical professionals and surgeons around to immediately act to fix the problem. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> they're not even, they're just outside. Brain. Go ahead and scramble it, then he won't remember it was us. We need a doctor, but we can't go to the hospital. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 what about the veterinarian? So if we make butters up to look like a dog, <laughs> oh no, we might have some off our pets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that modeling glue is making me dizzy. <laughs> butters, uh, we're trying to help you. We need some more fur. Look at this poor dog. Look at the poor dog. They're shaving the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, he like passes out. What the? Doctor. Doctor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what kind of sick bastard would do this to a dog? <laughs> Poor pup. Doctor can't even tell the difference. He's passing out as he's walking through the doors. He needs immediate medical treatment. You know, question of how deep does that throwing star go? Not good. He needs immediate medical care. Can you help him, doctor? I'm afraid I wouldn't know how. Unfortunately for this little fella, I'm a people doctor. Best we call the animal shelter. <laughs> right away. Oh, no. The right doctor is just clueless to know that it's a human. Ah! I'm Ginger! Oh my god, <laughs> Eric! <laughs> Did I just hear that right? Did he refer to himself as a ginger? I am sorry for any of those redheaded folks out there that take offense to this scene and the term ginger. Sorry. From his outward appearance, I would say he has the standard skin pigment deficiency. You mean? Yes, I'm afraid that your son is suffering from gingivitis. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I love a play on words. So gingivitis or gingivitis is not a thing. Gingivitis is a thing, and that's inflammation of the gums of your mouth caused by multiple different things. But how can I become a ginger now? I wasn't born like this! Well, the red-haired and freckled gene is a recessive <laughs> gene. If this type of pigmentation is recessive, it just doesn't show up randomly later in life. So I'm gonna stay like this forever? I'm sorry, son. I have a lot of friends who are redheads and they have freckles and they're good human beings. The skin color, your hair color, your freckles, it doesn't matter. We're all human beings. That the women of South Park should be treated the same as the men. That's right. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Flatulence, farting, it's hilarious. I'm a guy, we all like farting, it's funny. It happens. Hell's Pass Hospital, here we go. Hello, boys. Your mommy has a bacterial infection called C. diff. Ooh. It's very contagious. Bacterial infection called C. difficile is what it's called, the Clostridium difficile. And so it's an overgrowth of this specific bacteria that basically causes nausea, vomiting. Typically, people at risk of getting this are somebody who's actually had prior antibiotic use. All of us have trillions of microscopic critters that grow on and inside our bodies. Just like your mom. There's tiny creatures which live on your mom's skin, on her eyelashes, in her vagina. But the good bacteria in mommy's tummy are being overrun by bad bacteria. We can't use antibiotics because that will kill all the good bacteria too. There is antibiotic treatment for C. diff specifically, either Flagyl, something called metronidazole, or vancomycin. So what can you do for her? We need to take a healthy person's microbiome and start to grow it inside your mother. We do this with a fecal transplant. We'll get a donor's feces, mix it with water, and put it up your mom's anus. Ew! <laughs> this is fantastic! That is actually really darn accurate. Yes, fecal transplants is a real thing, and people have actually had real success. You're not literally just taking someone's poop turd and shoving it up their butt. It's basically processed under sterile conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no doubt about it. Those tonsils need to come out. 
What? Oh, that actually is quite helpful for the doctor because as you phonate like that, it drops the tongue back so you can actually see more in the posterior pharynx or the back of the throat. Oh, what exactly does that entail, doctor? It's a very simple operation. We'll just yeah. put you to sleep, Eric, and when you wake up, you'll be tonsil free. No, no way. <laughs> well, then I guess you don't want all the ice cream you get after the surgery either. Ice cream? They say all the ice cream that you want. Typically, you don't really want ice cream because of the dairy component of it. Most ice cream is dairy. It actually causes more mucus, which then can irritate the scars that are forming or the scabs that are going on in the back of the throat where the tonsils were. So typically more like sherbet or like ice pops, not dairy. I would stay away from it. It's over. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. You were right, man. I'm so proud of you, Eric. All right, so where's my ice cream? Oh, here's the doctor now. Oh no, oh no, never good when the doctors come in having kind of their eyes down. You were right, doctor. <laughs> Everything is okay. Uh -oh. No, it's not. Eric, I'm afraid that we've accidentally infected you with the AIDS virus. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Come on! AIDS is caused by HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. One leads to the next, and the diagnosis of AIDS is based on criteria having to do with different cell counts and opportunistic infections that could occur. How the heck does a kid get injected with AIDS? Come on, this is a little bit far-fetched and a little bit absurd. Let's see what's going on. What? What's that supposed to mean? During the tonsil surgery, we had to supply you with donor blood. A mistake was made and you were given blood yeah, contaminated okay. with HIV. We are very sorry. No, no, this is a joke, right? This is a joke, I can't have AIDS! I hope it's a joke. We are going to do everything in our power to make this up to you, Eric. For starters, I think I owe you some ice cream. This is actually a huge malpractice lawsuit on the hands of the doctor in the, the hospital. Getting an infection from blood products is super rare. Before you have surgery, you consent to getting blood products if you're needed, and a doctor needs to go over all of these risks and benefits. Getting HIV is not the worst case scenario these days. People get medications and are treated and live a full, fulfilling life. The show is making it into this horrible event, which it is if a hospital makes this type of error. It is not like it was back in the 80s and the 90s where pretty much getting HIV was a death sentence. I want to clarify the USDA's position on a healthy diet. Okay. There's been a lot of confusion about gluten lately. People saying that gluten is the cause of cancer, gluten should be avoided, gluten can make your dick fly off, but let's set the record straight. <laughs> make your dick fly off. <laughs> A lot of controversy related to gluten and people's sensitivity to gluten, but yes, typically I've never seen any genital issues relating to gluten. Now, if we wash the dough of all its starch, we can actually distill the wheat down, minus the water, minus the starch, and what we're left with is pure gluten. Not a bioweapon, just harmless flour protein. <laughs> if it's not dangerous, then eat that pure concentrated gluten. Nice. Yeah, all right. Oh no, something's gonna happen. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, no. oh, you see that? His dick's what? flying off. What the heck was that? There's a rocket ship of his penis. <laughs> this was freaking hilarious. I love that the creativity and the wackiness of this and that it could never actually happen, but it was very funny and absurd. So can I get a referral from you? For what? Medicinal marijuana. There's a shop that opened in the old KFC and they said I needed a doctor's referral to buy weed. Back in the day, a doctor used to have to write a medical marijuana card to use it for medicinal uses. Medicinal meaning like medication. That's why now in a lot of states in the United States, you don't need a script to go get marijuana at a dispensary. You have to be over the age of 21. So it's almost like buying alcohol in the United States. Medicinal marijuana is for people who aren't healthy. No. AIDS patients, cancer patients, you know, people going through chemo. The THC helps them eat and take the pain. Well, true. But it was also really good for like nausea as well for cancer patients or HIV patients. People could also use it for anxiety, chronic pain. There's a lot more uses now. Well, so doctor, how do most people get cancer? Well, there's a lot of ways you can get cancer. 
Yeah, but what's the quickest way? Cancer in general is not something to joke about, not to get so you can get secondary gain of getting marijuana or pain pills or anything like that. Testicular cancer. No. Linked to exposure to high doses of radiation. This is horrible. There are so many ways that we don't even totally understand environmentally, food, that increases your risk for cancer. So why the heck would you then knowingly do something to increase your risk for cancer for marijuana? Like, come on. Oh my God. Mr. Marsh, I'm afraid that the test came back positive. You do have testicular cancer. Now can I finally get my prescription, please? One ounce of purple lorpal, oh. two ounces of fisherman's friend, and a half Holy cow. Bama Kush. That is horrible. This doesn't happen in real life, but it's a funny depiction of what could happen. Typically, if you do have testicular cancer and you're getting nodules on your testicles, you should, as somebody who has testicles, palpate them to see if there's any nodularity or irregularity to them. And then if there is, you need to be seen by a physician. They'll get ultrasounds or do other testing, but they typically do not get melon size where you have to carry them in a wheelbarrow. He's very lucky you got him here when you did. He was in a very advanced state of vaginitis. Vaginitis occurs in somebody who has a vagina and it's basically inflammation of the tissue around the vagina and on the inside too. Vaginitis? What? It occurs when a person stops eating meat. Those sores on his skin were actually small vaginas. If we hadn't stopped it in time, Stan would have eventually just become one great big giant Whoa, dude. Whoa, 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 what the? Sometimes you can get vaginitis if you have multiple partners or if you have new sexual partners and easily treat it. Not this whole stop eating meat kind of thing. Not cool and it just doesn't go everywhere on your body like that. We've got an IV of pure beef blood pumping into Stan's veins and the sores are fading. Pure beef blood? No. If you're actually getting some other animal's blood, there's a chance that you can actually have an allergic reaction or your body's going to reject it. So you got to be very careful. Treatment for vaginitis, depending on potentially the source, it could be an antifungal or an antibacterial medication. Thank God we stopped it in time. Well, I guess we learned something today. It's wrong to eat veal because the animals are so horribly mistreated. But if you don't eat meat at all, you break out in vaginas. Hear, hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for all the vegetarians and vegans out there. This is horrible. I don't think you're ever going to get vaginitis on your face or your body or turn into a big vagina if you don't eat meat. You can get your source of protein through many different avenues. Wherever you want to get your protein source from, that's where you get it. No judgment. What is it exactly you're trying to do? Just, you know, make some money off them. Like Honey Boo Boo. Honey Boo Boo. Who's Honey Boo Boo? Honey Boo Boo's heart gave out. Oh. My name's Honey Boo Boo and I'm oh. a beauty queen, bitches. Only six and I've already had three heart what? attacks. Oh my gosh. Staying alive, staying alive. Dun, dun. See, it works with the CPR. So a heart attack is a blocked blood vessel that causes decreased blood flow to a certain part of your heart that doesn't pump well. A heart attack can lead into a cardiac arrest, but there are other major causes for a cardiac arrest where you would actually have to do CPR on somebody. Well, the doctor said Honey Boo Boo needs a heart transplant. Six year old with a heart transplant? They're gonna do a surgery and put a pig heart in her, so we're going to the ranch to pick out a hog. Honey Boo Boo is going to do pageants what? with a pig heart. We want to pick a hog that has pizzazz oh and knows how to work it, girl. I want that one. I don't know about you. If my heart were to not work anymore, I think I'd rather have a human heart than a pig heart just because it's the same species. Research has shown that you can actually transplant a pig heart into a human heart and have it function. I just hope when she does her pageants, the judges don't take away points because she's got a pig heart. Yes, we use pig valves. We can use a prosthetic heart. So you use another human's heart. There are different things you can use. The surgery is quite complicated. Honey, boo, boo. What? What are you going to tell them <laughs> judges if they ask you about your heart? I'm going to tell them. My heart is sweeter than bacon, child. Oh my gosh. You wouldn't be able to be awake during the surgery, right? You'd be out cold, intubated, sedated with IV medications as well as gases. And as her mom wouldn't be in the operating room either. And now I see her crawling around on the ground. A pig heart now, she thinks. And acting like a pig. Show him your oh scar. This. This is my scar, cause I got a pig heart. My scar makes me sassy, child. We call that your a zipper, basically, where you have to cut through the skin, the sternum, open up the ribs, get to your heart because it's protected really well. And then to actually close it up, you actually use chicken wire. But no, would you have this reaction by getting an organ from another species? No, you wouldn't start behaving like that. Kyle? Oh. 
they say Kyle's not doing well. Kyle always has been a diabetic and lately his kidneys have just been shutting down. If your sugar is totally under control as a diabetic, you're not going to have any peripheral neuropathy, kidney injuries, heart injuries, nothing like that. You're just living your life. But if your sugars are out of control, crazy high, they start like causing nerve damage, kidney damage. You need to control your blood sugars as best you can because when you do that, you live a long, fruitful life. Have you tried holistic natural medicines? They work wonders. I read all about it in People. Really? In People? There's a brand oh, new geez. shop in town that sells holistic medicines and all natural foods. It's run by this fascinating woman named Miss Information. Oh, no. Misinformation, like giving you wrong information. We're plagued by misinformation, but South Park nailed it on the head in this episode years ago. You see, the reasons our bodies fail is because of toxins. Getting your medical knowledge from People magazine, from misinformation, a new age shop. These things are totally unregulated. So medications in the United States are regulated. But herbs, supplements, these things are not regulated and you actually have no idea what is truly inside of them. Toxins? All the horrible food we eat, the sodas and meats are filled with toxins. And the only way for us okay. to get better is to flush those toxins out of our system. Sure. Western medicine is so quick to cut and carve up. I think an easier way to stop getting the toxins in your system, allow your body to work, is to stop ingesting those toxins. And our bodies are amazing and they want to be homeostatic and they will clear out things out of our our bodies but typically your body clears out most of the things that are bad for us but all your son needs is a toxin flushing <sighs> diet of lemon juice and cayenne pepper wow that's amazing misinformation do you hear that kyle you don't need surgery this, after all <coughs> i've heard this before lemon juice cayenne pepper yeah try it first before you're having major surgeries if it works wonderful but obviously it might be the first step to try before having major operation but then there's also the placebo effect of positive mind thinking that if you believe something's gonna work, it will work. So if anybody's done cayenne pepper and lemon, let me know in the comments, all right? Going out and playing around with chicken pox almost killed you all. This uh, chicken pox parties occur. They don't really occur too much, but let's see what's going on with these kids. Stanley, how are you feeling today, son? Pretty good. The doctor says that maybe you could- Whoa, so with the parents. It's Stanley. Wow, cool. And how are you- They all have it around their mouths. Okay, I'm better now. <laughs> what's so funny, you two? <laughs> We gave you guys herpes. What? What? Uh, what? You did this? <laughs> we got you back for getting us sick. We had a prostitute use your toothbrushes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny and messed up. Chicken pox is actually a type of herpes virus as well. Chicken pox is called varicella. We give vaccines out for people who have herpes. You can use any antiviral medication to help reduce the shedding and to hurry up your symptoms. Hey, how come you don't have sores on your lips, ma? Oh, I have them somewhere else, poopykins. Oh, messed up. So messed up. Because you can share them. You can spread them. And now you're stuck with it for the rest of your life. Hooray! I know one thing for sure. What's that, Eric? We're all gonna need a lot more calamine lotion. <laughs> <laughs> So calamine lotion is just a non-specific like anti-itch medication. It's pink and it dries on the tissue. Typically use it for like uh, poison ivy or poison oak, poison sumac, all that stuff. But you can use it for anything that itches. <laughs> and Kenny died. Oh my Every time. I killed Kenny. You Chicken pox actually could cause complications that could cause long-term medical problems and or death. School is going to make us all oh, get yeah. shots again. But this time it's so that we don't get warts in our vaginas. <laughs> yep. That's only a vaccination for girls, stupid. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm assuming they're talking about a vaccine for girls relating to HPV, which could then turn into cancer in the future if somebody gets it. So human papillomavirus. You also give the vaccine to boys of similar age because you don't want to basically be spreading it around. Then why are they saying that getting vaccinated in school is going to make us all retarded? Because some people think vaccinations can give you autism or Asperger's. <laughs> vaccines, yes, vaccines are not 100% benign, but they've debunked this topic where vaccines give autism or Asperger's, okay? There hasn't actually been any documented relationship between getting a vaccine and having autism. But in general, vaccines are quite beneficial compared to the negative aspect of vaccines. Eric, what is it this time? Fever, uh, light, lightheadedness. I don't know what's wrong with me. You don't feel warm. Oh, that's a relief. I thought maybe I had a fever, but I, oh, 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 my buns. There's a sharp pain in my buns. Can you lay on your stomach? <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> 
the sharp, sharp pain in my bones. Sometimes you may feel like you have a fever, but your skin temperature isn't warm. That just means your hypothalamus hasn't uh, adjusted your basically your body temperature. Some people actually be cold first before they actually mount a fever, just so you are aware. Why are there hamburgers in your underwear? Are you serious? <laughs> How could there be? Oh my, oh my god! Gosh. You're saying I have Asperger's? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, it's not Asperger's. It's Asperger's. It's a good laugh. Okay, totally not appropriate, but no. Are you trying to sneak food into the school or something? What are you talking about? I got vaccinated from the school and now clearly I have Asperger's. Very funny. Well, I'm glad you think Asperger's is funny. Just note my condition on your records there. Get out of my office. Wow. Asperger's is on the spectrum of autism. Autism and Asperger's are neurodevelopmental syndromes. And then basically there's difficulties in social interactions and nonverbal communications. My school teacher wanted to be a woman yeah. and you made him into one. Uh, yes, he mm -hmm. had a vaginoplasty. There's lots of different plasties out there. Angioplasty, which is relating to like new vessels of the heart. Plasty has to do with like making new sort of thing. So vaginoplasty, you're making a new vagina. You see, sometimes a woman wants to be a man. That procedure is called a peniplasty. Yes, there's the opposite of a vaginoplasty is peniplasty, which basically has to do with different procedures that have to do with like lengthening a penis, making one larger, that sort of thing. So it all just depends what you're starting with, so to speak. No, no, I, I want to be tall and black. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get taller and you can have like surgical rods placed in to lengthen potential bones if you break them and have them then reheal. But that's really not something that we do. And then can you change your skin color? I guess you can always like get tattooed. You're really not changing your skin color. Can you bleach your skin the other direction? Yes, potentially. I hate being small and Jewish. I feel like a <laughs> black man. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. It's a fairly common procedure, really, just the reverse of a Caucasian plasty, just like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Let's take a look here. <laughs> So the reverse of a Caucasian plasty. Okay, so Caucasian meaning white, making fun of Michael Jackson and his change of skin. Now the doctor is saying he's going to reverse that. Okay, sure. What we do is slice your face and peel it back so we can insert new pigment producing cells inside. What? We break the arm bones in several places and put bracers to make them longer. Now the knees, we need to snap off and fill with small round objects that can cause better movement. And we finish it off with a nice peniplasty to enhance the genitalia. Actually, you can rationalize like the different steps, wanting to lengthen in bone, better movement of joints, and then you know, making a penis larger because they're insinuating as a small penis. And then doing this pigmentation changes just to the face, which then would not be appropriate because you need pigmentation changes everywhere, right? Is this really a good idea? Well, it's a good idea if you want to be tall and black. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. We'll give you the information that's out there and your options, and then yeah, follow it up with, do you want to hear our opinion? A lot of people don't want to hear a physician's opinion on certain topics if somebody's mind is already made up. But we're also the expert, right? So we know what we're talking about. Well, there's no doubt in my mind, Mr. Marsh. <laughs> you are constipated. Thanks for the news flash. I haven't taken a crap in over three weeks. Oh my gosh. It's so common. So listening to the bowel sounds with your stethoscope, it really isn't that advantageous for us. What you're listening for is just to make sure that there's some movement of intestines. That's really all that you're hearing. Now, the pain of constipation typically comes in waves. And that has to do with the peristalsing of the intestines or basically the involuntary movement. And it has to do with like that movement, moving gas to a fixed area that's not moving or the muscle contracting on an area that's got a ton of poop. Well, what food have you been eating? P.F. Chang's mostly. Eating out all the time, probably not the best thing, but P.F. Chang's good. I like their General Tso's chicken. I'm going to prescribe a laxative, but I must warn you, when you do finally pass this stool, it might be very painful. If you're giving something from the top, hopefully there's no blockage on the bottom. I've even had patients with something called a fecal loma. So it's basically like the massive stool ball that's not gonna move and actually you have to have surgery to get it out. Crazy. <laughs> oh man, so painful. And man, you can cause uh, anal fissures and anal tears, basically where your cuts around the butthole and they're so painful and you can get hemorrhoids, internal and external. The whole process is bad. 
That has got to be the biggest crap I've ever taken. <laughs> you look at the stool, you want to look at the consistency, the color. It actually tells a lot about what your body is doing. The biggest crap? We actually don't keep track of that record, sir. <laughs> because we don't want to. Look, we get calls from men all the time who believe they took the biggest crap, and we simply can't handle oh the measuring and verification. You need to call the European Fecal Standards and Measurements Office in Zurich. How many guys out there are calling your buddies and telling you you got a poop that's coming out the bowl, it's not in the water, it's huge, so gross, but it's just a guy thing. Let me know the longest you've seen. Oh, oh. oh. Interesting. Maybe it's Tourette's. Let's see what's going on. It almost seems like his symptoms are like those in something called Tourette's, Tourette's syndrome. It's a neurologic issue, typically with like tick movements, and sometimes there can be verbal movements with it. Uh, pretty rhythmic. Tourette's syndrome. What is that, mommy? Butthole. Titties. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. likely. Tourette's is a hereditary disease. It doesn't just suddenly start. But yes, it just doesn't typically just come on. But it does show up in it a young age. On the other hand, Tourette's does often develop later in a child's life, getting progressively worse. Oh, well that's it! it in. Oh, Mexican stinky mouse! There is actually no treatment for Tourette's. It's something over time that kind of is managed and then goes away. But what about school, doctor? The teachers and the principal, they won't understand that I can't control what I say. Don't worry, young man. We'll make sure everyone understands your disease. Nice, I like the doctor. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Imagine this actually was happening in school. Yeah, so if he's faking it, it takes a lot of work to just like continually like come up with like, you know, swear words and just screaming out in public. On the flip side, this is actually really true. This is like really tough and really hard social situation. And hopefully surround yourself with people who are understanding and educating the people around you that this is not something you're doing on purpose. Oh my gosh. Whoa. What have you done? It wasn't me. It was the ghost. Oh, Stephen, I don't know if we should ground him or call a doctor. What do you think, doctor? Your son is suffering from severe dementia. He claims that the ghost of a dead friend talks to him. <laughs> now, the doctor diagnosing him with dementia. No. Dementia itself is only really truly diagnosed on autopsy, taking a look at the brain, but there are like dementia scores and like little tests that we can do. This is usually a sign of schizophrenia brought on by some tragic event in the child's past. I think it's best that we take him to the mental center and do some tests. Wait a minute. <laughs> you just gave him all these different diagnoses. He went from dementia to schizophrenia. Why can't the kid just have like a friend that he just has? Throwing a diagnosis on a patient and then giving medications and now putting into a mental institution. Like, come on. All right, butters, just try to relax. Oh my gosh. So a lot of times if people do have visual auditory hallucinations, those sorts of things, sometimes it's actually not mental and it actually is like something physical. It's basically ruling out all things that could be treated medically in the sense of like medications or surgeries, that sort of thing. And then once that's done, you go down the mental health behavioral aspect of things. Doing just fine, Biders. Just stay perfectly still. What? Don't worry, Mr. Stotch. Whatever traumatized your son in his past, we'll find it. Oh my gosh. No, we do not have machines like that. Actually, the only machine or something that we have that's very similar is like uh, having to do with like prostate illnesses. As we get older, there's a device that goes through your perineum and that has to do with like putting these like treatment seeds and medication directly into the prostate itself. That's how they get there. But that's not a medical device. I don't know what the device that is, but that's not a medical device. What have we got? Not sure. Looks like a possible code 56. <laughs> I don't know what a code 56 is at all. At the hospital, we definitely have codes, but they're color coordinated. A security alert, child abducted, but I don't know what a code 56 is. You're going to be okay, baby. Get me 50 cc's of ketamine, stat. And get something for the kid, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> ketamine. So we used to not use ketamine a lot. They actually sometimes could have what you call a bad trip or a bad experience. So ketamine can actually cause you to get really nauseous and vomit a lot. And it also can cause you to have hypersalivation. The medication is called a dissociative hypnotic. So it's actually like hypnotizes you and you're nobody's home. And if you don't get it right, you can send somebody into what's called a K-hole. Doctors at hospitals don't have access to the medications in the machines. There's been potential abuse in the past. So now we don't have access to it. Doctor, did you find out what's wrong with him? I'm afraid he's running out of time. What? Why? What's wrong with him? It's his time. It's running out of time. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if the doc's trying to be philosophical, but everybody's time is running out. So what is he talking about? Cartman is in the hospital. They think he might die. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, nobody seems to know, but we think it's because he drank Kenny's soul four weeks ago. Kenny's ashes were in an urn, and Cartman drank it thinking it was chocolate milk mix. Oh, no. Gross. That's disgusting. The ashes of a dead body is meat burnt to a crisp, as well as bone in there that doesn't necessarily get broken down. So the question ends up being, can he be horribly sick from it? People eat their own placenta, different societies that are cannibalists, maybe upset stomach, indigestion, different things that might make you queasy, but are you gonna die? Unlikely. I think I have more questions than I have answers after watching this clip. What happened to him, doctor? From the test results, it would appear your child was tortured by a bully. He received a massive Snuggie. His underwear pulled up so high it nearly killed him. He also received two Indian sunburns on his forearms. What? First of all, bullying, don't do it. There's no place for it. And karma comes around. That's all I'm gonna say. Bad wedgies. You can actually cause lacerations. You can cause tears. Then you have these Indian sunburns when you like rub the skin really, really hard. So if you actually like rub the skin, your own skin, then you can cause an abrasion, a scar, and injury there. A Charlie horse on the thigh and a second degree titty twister. Okay, nipple twister, titty twister. Very painful, obviously. And sometimes actually old techniques in the hospital where, where people were unconscious and not knowing if they're awake or not, people would typically try to like squeeze that area. We don't do that anymore. And from the damage to his head area, it appears he was also given a swirly. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a swirly is when you put somebody's head in a toilet, turn it on and it spins down. I don't understand that. Drop somebody in a porcelain toilet and cause some head trauma and can cause compression fractures of the neck. Don't do these things. You can cause serious injury without really your initial intention. Jesus Christ, I've never seen so many Indian sunburns and titty twisters in my <laughs> life. Get a cold towel on that pink belly. <laughs> it's a pandemic of Indian sunburns and titty twisters. Another wet willy? Worst one yet. Give the poor kid some more food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving a morphine for a wet willy. I mean, maybe you could have a perforated eardrum if you stick it in too far or cause too much impression and barotrauma to the area. But again, you still don't give morphine for that. You give ibuprofen or Tylenol. This is a whole episode on bullying and that is totally unacceptable. Some parents don't even know that their kid is bullying other kids. Personality disorders that could be going on, mental disorders that can be going on. So if you or somebody you know is getting bullied or did get bullied, there is resources out there. There's a website called stopbullying.gov and then obviously guidance counselors, principals, coaches, social workers. You know, there's people out there that can help. This is going to be totally cool, you guys. It's not going to work. Just come oh down there. Oh my gosh. Yay, Carmen, fly, fly, fly. The magic of flight. No, not going to work. Oh, we knew this was a bad idea. Everybody on the planet knew it was a bad idea. At least wearing a helmet. That was smart-ish. And so that building at least was two stories, which is 20 feet. So when we have major injuries, it is typically greater than three times someone's height. If somebody lands on their feet, they can have calcaneal fractures, which is the bone on your heel, but they can have a compressive force that goes all the way up, fracturing your spine. Are you landing on a flat surface or are you landing on an object that's on the flat surface, which then can cause your back to snap and cause injury? Well, what's wrong? Him. I'm afraid that your son is incredibly stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't typically say that right away. I mean, there could be a conversation later relating to trying to do this was not smart and that word could come out, but not relating to the individual themselves. The stupidity is so severe that it caused a fall, which has put him into a deep coma. Coma? My God, for, for how long? There's no telling. He may never recover. We'll just have to wait. And see. So there are times when we do a medically induced coma, which we put somebody on sedation to rest, to allow us to get everything that we need to get done at the hospital. Then you have people who are unconscious without sedation, which is 
a type of coma and then you actually do different neurologic tests to see if there's any brain activity or not and then you you know question will somebody ever recover after three days a lot of times if they're brain dead probably not the best situation if you fall off a roof and you land on your head could you end up in a situation like eric yes is it common probably not that common but it can happen don't let me swallow this i'll do it what is it is that an m m it's an almond m m i'm very allergic to almonds please oh just leave me alone <gasps> oh shit! Don't let him swallow it! Pry his mouth open! He ate it! Nut allergy is super common. You get people, most of the time, they don't eat the nut because they know, but maybe they had a cookie or something was made in a similar factory, cross-contamination. Allergic reactions are life-threatening, literally life-threatening. The amount of swelling can cut off your airway, so that's why it's important to have an EpiPen around if you have an allergy, and then get to the hospital ASAP. Your friend has had a severe allergic reaction. Can we please just try and talk to him? All right, but don't take too long. It doesn't work that way. You can't have that many visitors at the hospital. You have to get checked out, especially nowadays. The person's there to recover and the hospital staff is there to help. If there's so many people in the room, we can't get our jobs done. So you have to think about it that way. Oh my gosh, look how swollen his face is. Holy cow, common and allergic reaction. Some people will come into the hospital with something called angioedema, which is Almost like an allergic reaction, but it's not. It's swelling just specifically the face. And most of these people come in with swelling of their tongues and their neck. We still will throw the kitchen sink at a patient with all the medications that we would use for an allergic reaction. It is very scary, dealt with as many, many times. And sometimes you even have to cut somebody's neck open and stick a tube in their neck. Crazy. Hi, Dr. Large. How's my little piggy today? Hey, don't call me a little piggy. <laughs> I just say that because you're my- Ah, uh, you just call him a little piggy because it's his buddy. No, name calling in general, do not do. All you have to do is read the letters. Can you see the letters? Yes. All right, read them out for me. I am a little piggy. <laughs> <laughs> that does it. No, no, that does it. Wait, wait. A carrot a day. That is hilarious. Supposedly, the carrot is really good for your eye. Um, and the fact that he is an optometrist. Normally, you'd see an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So this is like carrot a day keeps the doctor away. One or two. Two. No, the answer is one, Piggy. One. <laughs> I hate you. Yes, there's obviously a problem with your eyes. You've got a small stigmatism that's causing all the problem. I'm just going to take them off Sweet. as soon as I leave. That's why we have the little stapler. Ow! Son of a... What? <laughs> well, we actually will use staples sometimes to the scalp for laceration repairs, but typically we won't use it on the face. We don't need to staple and put big holes in it, which could leave scars. So astigmatism is complicated. It has to do with like lenses and curves and basically the eye shape on the inside structurally has two vision points. So it can cause some blurriness. And that's why we have doctors specifically just for the eye. Eric, it's just a little prick. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally how I felt when I was a kid going to the doctor's office. It's not that bad. You're not just going to come at a child with a needle. You're going to grab an alcohol swab so you can clean the area that you're going to inject. And obviously you're not going to sit there being naked. <laughs> Obviously running around the room, freaking out, breaking things. It actually has happened before. We can use conscious sedation, but if it's something pretty simple, there's actually a device called a papoose. Basically it's a board that has straps on it, keeps the arms down. Room is upstairs. Oh my gosh. There are still doctors that will do home visits actually having more of a resurgence. Difficulty for say elderly patients to get to a hospital or patients that aren't mobile. Sometimes people don't like going to the office. They get anxiety so they can pay for their own service to have a doctor come. Oh man, you don't want to sneak attack somebody who's sleeping. You don't know the response. They might come up, they might take the needle and stab you with it. They're gonna hurt you. Yeah, not good. Uh, yep. So you, you see the doctor's syringe has a circular like pull top. A dental office will actually have that device because they can't use two hands. Most of the syringes we use at the hospital have flat tops. Wait a second. <laughs> oh my gosh. We do get patients for a multitude of reasons, typically substance related. They will strip down naked, start peeing in corners, literally stand there naked, poop in their hands, smear it on the walls. They 
actually do this. I've seen it all. If you eat food, you crap out your butt, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, now keep with me here. It gets a little complicated. <laughs> if you eat food and crap out your butt, then maybe if you stuck food in your butt, you would crap out your mouth. No, nope. food going up the rear won't come out the mouth. I have seen people that are so backed up, literally they're puking poop. I felt so bad for this person, but we made them better. And then eventually they needed surgery to fix the blockage. What's going on? Carmen shoved food up his ass and now he's trying to crap out his mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Sorry, gross. I'm doing it, I eat it. God, give me a minute. No, people try to stick like alcohol maybe up their butt for reabsorption. It doesn't work that way. So if you're trying to poop out your mouth, you're probably just gonna vomit. It's probably just gonna be some gastric content. It's gonna burn, it's gonna hurt. Gross. <laughs> oh no! I don't even know where to go with that. Just think about that. You just have poop come out of your mouth. It's probably got E. coli all over it and a ton of other bacteria. It probably tastes disgusting. I don't know what else to say. That's so disgusting. All right, get down. This is my kind of boat ride. What are you gonna do? Hit the bull in the balls with a snowball. Oh yeah, that's a good <laughs> You know, when you see like rodeos, people ride bulls and stuff, there's a strap on the back has to do with their genitals. Not the nicest thing in the world to be doing to an animal to make them get pissed off. Oh! <laughs> oh, you got his bell rung. If you're unsure what a concussion is, it's a kind of a generic term having to do like injury to the brain. Symptoms, headache, dizziness, memory issues, nausea, vomiting. It's really important to follow with a neurologist so that way you're monitored. Boys, I'm afraid your fat little friend has suffered head trauma. What's the matter with him? Well, apparently he thinks he's a Vietnamese prostitute named Ming Lee. What? Sometimes you can be hit so bad, you don't know who you are, and then you may believe that you're somebody else. If you do ride a bull or you ride a horse, any of that stuff, wear a helmet, please. You need to take him home and let him get plenty of sleep. Damn it! Carmen, Carmen, can you hear me? Oh, he's fine, dude. Is there something called a foreign accent syndrome? Yes, there is. Literally, it happens with dramatic brain injuries or strokes where somebody all of a sudden can speak another language. How they say it might be a little bit off, but sometimes it happens. You can ask my special guest, Miss Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez? Hello. <laughs> oh, Jesus you little snot nose. Ow, 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 oh, Jesus. Ah! Don't hit people. You wouldn't want to get hit yourself, so don't do it to somebody else. I've definitely seen baseball bat injuries, hammer injuries, machete injuries, anything you can think of people use. All these things to hit another person. Please don't do that. Your son's hand has a hairline fracture and two dislocated fingers. Oh dear. He probably dislocated these two <laughs> fingers over here, which is super common. Very easy to put back in. There's not just one big bone in the palm. These are your metacarpals. And then these are your phalanges. Your son appears to be completely insane. What? I told you this would happen. Oh, hello guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you could be able to move dislocated fingers, but they wouldn't be able to bend at the joint and where they're broken. There are so many people out there that fracture things and don't realize they have. You really think someone like this can ever become an awesome, famous NASCAR yeah. driver? NASCAR is only for poor and stupid people. I what? NASCAR is cool, man. They're burning a ton of calories. It actually takes a lot of work to drive those cars the way that these guys drive those cars. You gotta be like physically fit. But no, it has nothing to do with being poor or wherever this stereotype is coming from. How come you're hanging upside down? I need to get stupid, buddies. I'm getting all the blood to rest in my head and watching a marathon of two and a half men. Feel stupid yet? Not yet. What? That doesn't work. Having blood rush to your brain is going to make you feel kind of full, dizzy, weird. You're not going to tolerate it very well, and then you'll stop doing that. Our bodies are not designed to be upside down like that for a prolonged period of time. When a woman isn't feeling her freshest, she turns to Vagisil. Ah, God damn it! another Vagisil! <laughs> to stop feminine itching and relieve vaginal odors. Whoa. Vagisil is not gross. It has to do with treatment of conditions down in the groin related to dryness, itching. So it just helps the environment down there. It's not disgusting. It's not gross. It's normal. In some cases, Vagisil can lead to short-term memory loss. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you hear that? Oh, my God, butters. 
We need Vagisil. The manufacturer of a medication has to put every single side effect that has ever occurred on the label. So even if it's just one person out of a bazillion people that have taken it, they need to disclose that. You want to be aware of what are the general side effects that most people get. Which one do I use to kill brain cells? Look that way, make sure oh the catch is What is he gonna do? Oh my gosh, no. So on the label, it also says do not ingest these medications. Typically creams, ointments are topical. It's gonna cause more GI irritation. Little boy, what are you doing? Oh my God, butters. I feel kind of stupid. Really? <laughs> yes, I'm feeling totally stupid right now. That was fast. Grab what you can and let's get out of here. If you run into an issue where you accidentally swallow something you shouldn't have swallowed, please, in the United States at least, call the poison center. Because guess what happens when you go to the ER? We call that same number and they tell us what the guidelines say for that product. Hey, maybe we should ask the girls what they learned in sex ed. Yeah. Hey, Wendy, did you guys get... Oh! Guys, we just want to know... The... <laughs> I want to know what they learned about the opposite sex. Are you wearing a condom? A what? Do any of you have your condoms on? <laughs> <laughs> wearing protection helps preventing pregnancies. Wearing protection helps decrease the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. It's not good to wear a condom on a flaccid penis. Don't you know that without wearing a condom, you could get a disease? Nuh-uh. Yeah, -huh. If you don't wear a condom, you're gonna get AIDS. AIDs? Oh, jeez. I don't wanna get the AIDS, fellas. Is that what you learned in sex ed? Wow. Wearing a condom randomly does not help decrease the spread. We're talking about bloodborne pathogens. Could be in your semen as well. That is why we're talking about using protection because you can spread disease. Fourth grade. I didn't learn it in fourth condom grade. Condom is driving me crazy. Yeah, I've changed my mind three times already because it itches so much. <laughs> How do these kids even get a hold of them? You gotta be careful, they're latex. So you have to worry about latex allergies. They do make alternatives that are not latex. Yeah, but it makes going to the bathroom easier. <laughs> yes, he's got a <laughs> pee balloon. All right, boys, I now have all the information I need to teach you the female anatomy, okay? Okay. Okay, this part here is the vaginal opening. At least there's a good depiction of the female sex organ. You have all the anatomy there, which is good. They're being taught. This is where the man puts his... Eric, what the hell are you doing? I'm putting on a new condom. I filled the other one up. Why are you wearing a condom? So I don't get AIDS? Eric, you can't get AIDS from just sitting around. You have to get it from sex. From sex? Yeah. Yes. You mean intercourse with a girl? Yes. He says sex with females. You can get AIDS from having sex with any sex. Oh, dude. Oh, God, I popped it. Oh, it hurts. What the hell are you doing? Oh, crap. Oh, God, get me off of here. Dude. Oh, have you ever tried to climb over one of those fences that have the prongs like sticking up? We well, gotta really be careful. You gotta make sure you don't get your crotch stuck on it. It can lacerate. And you always have to worry about tetanus and make sure your tetanus shot is up to date, which we do in the emergency department. Stan, I have to go home. I need my cream. I need my cream. I don't know what kind of creams he's talking about, but maybe he's talking about like hemorrhoidal creams. And he also fell off the fence. Is any fall greater than 15 feet or three times your height? You want to fall and roll so you can disperse the energy versus taking the full force. All right, let's go. That's right, you stay out. You can't keep us up forever, you f***ing fat ass. We'll be back as soon as Kyle's hemorrhoid is better. My life can't get any worse. Sometimes you can have an internal hemorrhoid or an external hemorrhoid. Internal hemorrhoids bleed like heck, but they don't typically hurt. Or external hemorrhoids, which hurt a lot and then they thrombose, meaning they form a clot and they turn different colors. They can bleed as well, but they cause a lot of discomfort. Oh my gosh. You're a very lucky little boy. I've never seen a hemorrhoid so infected. Oh. It could have killed you. Lucky. Whoa. So if a hemorrhoid potentially gets infected, you would need antibiotics. You might have abscess formation, which is the collection of pus underneath the tissue. And if that's the case, it typically needs to be cut open. Dude, are you okay? Oh, I'm slow, Stan. I popped my hemorrhoid trying to climb the fence into Cartman land and it got infected. I really need to go to the bathroom, but if I do, it will pop again and the pain will make me pass out. How are you? I'm a great wild <laughs> kid ride any amusement park rides for over a year because of his horrible hemorrhoid. Why would you not be able to ride a roller coaster? Maybe give it like a couple weeks, a month because of maybe intra-abdominal pressures that you would have when you're riding the roller coaster, contracting really hard. You don't want that pressure down below. Not comfortable, not fun.
Just oh my more. gosh! There we go. A lot of times if somebody has an infection related to a hemorrhoid, they cut it open. What you end up doing is you pack it with a specific material to keep it open. I don't know what they would be poking, cutting open, especially if somebody's awake like that. I'm afraid that the hemorrhoid has spread to his lungs. Are you saying? There's nothing more I can do. Little fellas just lost his will to live. Stop it. The terminology is wrong. He's saying that the hemorrhoid got to his lung. No. Did the infection that was infecting the hemorrhoid get into his bloodstream and then seed itself somewhere else? Those things can happen. Nice. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, he's mad. Oh, Lord. Ooh, he is getting served. God. What happened to him, doctor? He got served. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie he got served? I wonder if he tried to dance back versus stress heart attack. What's going on? This dancing was so fast, I couldn't do anything. Shh, relax, Mr. Marsh. We just got the x-rays back. Oh, gosh. He mostly got served here and here. But the worst serving was here in the pelvis region. I have not had anybody come into the emergency department with injuries relating to being served, but I've seen injuries relating to break dancing or dancing. So these guys are spinning on their joints, the wrist and the elbow and the hip. You can actually have dislocations. All right, I'm assuming we are at the otolaryngologist's office, only because there's an ear, nose, and throat chart in the back. What's bringing you in today? I'm, uh, having this problem with my ears. There's like a persistent kind of a ringing going on. Persistent ringing in your ears, something called tinnitus. There's actually no specific treatment for it, except more behavioral to reduce your awareness of it and kind of ignore it. Can you describe the ringing? It's, uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> The doctor here is using an otoscope, looking at the external auditory canal for any swelling, looking to see if there's any earwax in there that's causing an issue, and looking at the eardrum itself. You're hearing a song? Yeah, um, <clears throat> there's a new woman that has joined our faculty. Her name is Strong Woman. And uh, she seems to have set off some kind of device in my ears. Sometimes when people are describing that they have an implanted device in their body, we get a little bit worried, depending on their age, if this could be the start of something called schizophrenia. We discuss with them, we talk about it with them. Having that discussion, maybe they need to see a psychiatrist. Well, I looked, and Hootie and the Blowfish aren't in your ears. I believe you're hearing them in your mind and your heart. Oh. Dude. Has anybody gone to the hospital because of medical issues relating to love? Yes. We see people a lot of times who maybe have just broken up and they're under a lot of stress. And then we see people who have chest pains when they have broken heart syndrome. So yes, it happens. Nice. All right, let's do it. All right, fine, Wendy. I'll fight you, you big pony. Oh, bullies. Don't fight bullies, it's not worth it. Make people aware, avoid the bullies best you can. I know it's really difficult, and if you're a bully out there, stop it, karma happens. Whoa, my gosh. When you get knocked out, it's because you're sloshing your brain around and it got concussed enough to where it's like, nope, stay down. It's a defense mechanism. And obviously the person doing the punching, if you're using a fist, you can actually cause yourself to get a boxer's fracture and then you potentially need surgery or be put in a cast. There's no good outcome. This is horrible. He's already got black eyes. Oh my gosh. So you gotta stop this. Come on, guys. He's got black eyes, both sides already, which means he probably had a nasal fracture. You always do worry about raccoon eyes relating to a basal or skull fracture. There's a lot of consequences to the things that we think of machismo or whatever you want to call it. Don't get into fights. And so then I put on the exact same album that I really liked a year ago, and it sounded like to me. The doctor is doing a good job. He's looking in his ear with an otoscope. Maybe he has a cerumen impaction. Basically, his ears are just filled with earwax, and he can't hear the normal sound coming through. Uh-huh, and what about food? Are some of the things you thought tasted good tasting like to you now, too? Yeah. I used to love these pop rock things, and I tried them the other day, and I thought they tasted like could he have like a nasal congestion, which is related to basically smell. Time you sniff in, you can get fluid to go through your eustachian tubes that then clog up your ears on the inside. Let's just do a quick ear exam. I'm gonna play some tween wave music and you tell me what you hear. Sounds like 
Uh-huh. Now I'm going to play you some good old Bob Dylan. You like a... <laughs> Why does it keep hearing like farting noises? That sounds like ears. too. Wait, oh this sounds gosh. like to you? Yeah, dude, it's just... He's saying it sounds like Well, actually, it sounds like farting noises. Sometimes it's really hard to get the exact story that a patient is trying to tell you. Just try to be specific and very direct about the symptoms that you're trying to describe. I'm going to try something else. Look at these two pictures. One of them is an ad for Kevin James' new movie, The Zookeeper, and the other is a turd in a microwave. Which one is the ad for The Zookeeper? What? They both look the same. They look the same. You don't see any difference in the picture. They both look like turds about to be reheated to me. Oh yes, dear. Just with I a think different I know turd. what this is. We have images where you kind of look and describe what you see. It's called the Rorschach test. The psychiatrist uses it to kind of see where your brain thinks. You see, Stan, as you get older, things that you used to like start looking and sounding like <laughs> And things that seem <laughs> as a child don't seem as <laughs> With you, somehow the wires have gotten crossed and everything looks and sounds like <laughs> to you. It's a condition called being a cynical <laughs> <hole>. <laughs> I can't oh God, wait to talk Sarcastaball because it's oh. really compelling. Sarcastable? Joining me now is the coach of the Denver Broncos and the inventor okay. of Sarcastaball, Randy Marsh. Thanks for calling in, Randy. Really happy to have you on the show. Yeah, it's awesome to be on your show. Randy, first off, thanks for taking a sport that we all love and turning it into a sarcastic nightmare. Way to go. Randy, something's happened. Are you unable to stop being sarcastic? Oh, right. I can't stop being sarcastic now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. You're like, are they being sarcastic or not being sarcastic? I'm telling you, Randy, I think this sport is doing something to your brain. Right, it's doing something to my brain, and now I can't stop being sarcastic. So there you go. That's actually a really good depiction of what a CAT scan machine looks like. A CT scan is the same thing as a CAT scan. It's a lot of x-rays that are put basically in 3D form. So your first image of checking somebody's brain would be a CT scan because it's the fastest. So we don't use film like that anymore. It's all on a computer. I'm sorry, Mr. Marsh, but there appears to be permanent damage. Oh boy, this is great. My week just keeps getting better. How do we fix this, doctor? You don't. I'm sorry. There just isn't enough research in how sarcasm affects the brain. So that's it. I should just go home and forget about what this sport has done to me. Let thousands of people play sarcastic ball and get hurt too. Oh, really? You you think there's a correlation between sarcasm and sarcastic ball? You're seeing both sides of the brain and you're seeing the gray and the white matter. Typically the black on a CT scan is going to be your cerebral spinal fluid that's in there. Sometimes air will show up the same color. The white could be related to blood or contrast dye or basically kind of like the meninges that separate the brain. So you have like your falcs and the tentorums, those sorts of things can show up white as well. No. Sarcastable has nothing to do with it. I just, I just really enjoy being sarcastic, and so I must be finding an excuse. You know, I have a 50-year-old Alzheimer's patient out in the waiting room who can't even remember his family. So Alzheimer's is a type of dementia, and basically it has to do with plaques that are formed in the brain and actually causes the brain to kind of get more dense and shrink down. Let's forget about him and focus on how Sarcastable might be damaging people's brains. My son is out there playing that game. It's heartwarming to see you have such high regard for his safety. Sarcastic ball, don't really understand, but football, there's a lot of injuries that are related to your brain. Concussions, traumatic brain injury, fractures, you can get some bleeding. Or at the infirmary. Look, doctor, you have to give me something. I'm really sick. What exactly are your symptoms? I'm like, starting to question things that I've done. <laughs> like, starting to question the person I've become. And I can't sleep at night. I... Well, laying in bed, thinking all night long, that is insomnia or relating to anxiety and depression. They're kind of on the same spectrum. I just lay in my cell wondering if I've been a bad father lately and a bad husband. So typically the medications that are used in these facilities are minimum, but when it relates to these type of requests, typically they do not provide those types of medications. Maybe they shouldn't go away. Maybe this is your wake up call that you've been abusing drugs and need to face all your wrongdoings. There are obviously are instances where withdrawal can cause issues. We worry about benzodiazepines causing intractable seizures that can cause issues. And then also methamphetamines withdrawal will actually cause priapism. 
And you say you've never had a mustache before. So at least the doctor is using the appropriate tool with the cover on the otoscope, trying to look closely with a flashlight. Obviously, in this situation, you could use like a pen light. It's not really that much magnified. Holy sh! Oh my gosh! The outbreak of mustache. Soon. Sometimes people will take pills for hair growth and they're getting unwanted hair growth in other areas of their body. And then all of a sudden you get like massive amount of chest hair or back hair or butt hair. Another strain of COVID or simply more COVID related symptoms. A reported one in 10 people in Park County are experiencing mustaches and nobody seems to know why. The mayor has called for help from infectious disease experts and Dr. Anthony Fauci arrived at South Park Hospital today to give his advice. Oh my gosh. We're seeing people in severe respiratory distress requiring high flow oxygen, steroids, and a lot of help and support. We aren't sure why some people are getting a mustache and some aren't, but we have to do all we can to avoid it becoming fashionable. <laughs> There are sometimes weird symptoms, weird side effects. Yes, they're taking this to the extreme, but things similarly can happen with different types of symptoms. Will our chin diapers keep us safe? Yes, but we must wear them where the mustache would be. <laughs> the whole time during this pandemic, we have to take care of patients that would wear the mask under the chin, on their foreheads. We should kind of try to minimize spreading germs and there are studies that it does reduce the spread of germs. That's why we wear them in the operating room to protect the patient. Hello? Dude, did you get your period yet? No, there's no blood coming out of my ass. Mine neither, but I double checked and Carmen was right. Your period is the start of puberty. <laughs> oh my gosh, these kids. You're not gonna have a period if you don't have a uterus. The uterus has a lining that sheds every month due to hormonal changes relating to ovulation and reproductive years. And this typically begins during puberty, early teens. Sometimes it can be 12. You're bleeding out of your rectum, out of your butthole. You need to see a doctor. What happened? Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh my gosh. If you have blood in your stool, got to get checked out by your doctor. Well, welcome to the club, Kenny. You got your period, so now you're a man. Ooh. God damn it, Kenny, shut the hell up. Oh! If the blood coming out of your butt or your poop starts looking like what we call melana or dark maroon or even black, then it could be coming higher up, like closer to your stomach. Then that's called an upper GI bleed. They actually might vomit blood. And that's super concerning, right? Because you're having an active bleeding, it's bright red. There's no time for the blood to get digested by your digestive system. And then it could be meaning that there's a brisk bleed due to like an ulcer, perforation, very scary things. Gosh. Mr. and Miss McCormick. Yes? yes. I'm sorry, we couldn't save yourself. If I ever come out and talk to a patient's family, I'm not coming out in bloody clothes, like totally inappropriate. Change your clothes, put a coat on, cover it up. They don't need to see that. What killed him, doctor? Well, we found a tampon stuck up your child's ass. Apparently, he'd had it up there for several days. It plugged him up until he finally burst from the inside out like a ruptured septic tank. Oh my God. My worry is that he could have been following some kind of crazy new fad. Perhaps the children are all shoving tampons up their ass because they've seen the Backstreet Boys doing it on TV or something. <laughs> what? Okay. Don't put tampons in there. Forget about it. That's why the tampons have strings so you can actually pull them out and they shouldn't be in there for more than 24 hours. I think maybe Timmy is suffering from something called Attention Deficit Disorder or ADD. ADD, ADHD, the names keep changing. It has to do with diagnosing somebody at a young age relating to their ability to pay attention. All right, this is a very simple test which should determine without a doubt whether or not Timmy has Attention Deficit Disorder. Now, Timmy, I'm gonna read you a book called The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. To get a diagnosis of it, it has to be over time. Typically it's done around the age of six or seven years of age. There's a bunch different types of medications that you can give somebody at this age to help focus them. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever Everybody's since. Everybody's not gonna pay attention. Oh my gosh, I would be pulling out my hair if it took this long. Okay now, Timmy, can you tell me, in chapter seven, what kind of car did Gatsby drive? Timmy! Well, that settles it. Huh? Huh? This young man definitely has attention deficit disorder. Oh, oh I, I knew it. What can we do for him, doctor? 
Well, ADD is fairly common in kids today. I'm going to prescribe some Ritalin, and we'll see how that goes for little Timmy. Ritalin is one type of medication that you might use to help with this type of disorder, as well as, say, Adderall. I think Timmy needs a little bit more further evaluation on a much deeper level and maybe a different doctor. Well, I have to admit, I'm still embarrassed about getting a nose job, Tom. I didn't want people at school to know, so I told them I had herpes. What? Now you have herpes one and you have herpes two. One is genital herpes, basically, herpes two, versus one, which is just oral. Now we could go with something a little smaller, which would make you look like this. Hmm. Whoa. <laughs> David Hasselhoff. Wow, that's it. That's the nose I want. All righty then. Now, I must warn you, Mr. Garrison, that there are risks. You could wind up a hideous, foul shadow of a creature. Okay. I can live with that. <laughs> All right, then. Let's get started. Make sure that the doctors that you're going to are board certified. You know, basically, they have the residency. We did some major reconstruction, sawed through some bone, snapped some cartilage. Uh, uh, All yep, the blood and mucus, just the sound of bone and sinew coming apart. <laughs> uh, By the way, yeah, did you so ever cute. see that movie, Contact? Oh, he's puking. Why is he puking? Purple. Could be a mix of whatever's in his stomach. If you're also vomiting just after having the surgery, you increase the risk of more bleeding because it increases pressure. How's he doing? Well, he isn't worse, but he isn't getting better. It's almost as if his cancer were tied. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my cancer hurts. He seems to have put all his hope into you winning that game. Cancer is an abnormal cell that's gone rogue that continues to multiply and divide. So if it's not getting worse, then it's not multiplying and dividing, which to me, that means it's actually doing better. Our hockey team has just been invited to play against Denver County during a Colorado Avalanche game. Wow, at the Pepsi Center. Look, he's coming around again. That's our biggest game ever. Do you think we can win, coach? Imagine if there was one game, one chance to make everything right. Obviously, when somebody's sick and you can give them positive information and get their spirits up, the body responds in a positive way. So, yes, hopefully this happens for this kid. Just be aware of this, coach. If you lose the big game, that little boy is going to die faster than Steve Irwin in a tank full of stingrays. Wow, that's messed up. Sometimes things happen when it comes to cancer. Your body's fighting, 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 and then the cancer burden just gets so overwhelming or causes you to be in a hypercoagulable state, which then can increase your risk of blood clots and you can have a massive pulmonary embolism that can take you right away. Parents, I'll call you all together because I think you might be making a mistake putting your children on Ritalin. But our kids have attention deficit disorder, Chef. They can't pay attention in school without it. Ritalin and Adderall, they're different classes of medication, but they're there to treat the same type of medical condition having to do with ADHD and trying to keep somebody's attention and focus. I know you want to help your kids, but I brought over a videotape to show you that there are alternatives. There's this doctor in Northern California who is doing really amazing things with kids who have ADD. I want you to watch this tape. Ritalin is methylphenidate, which basically is a stimulant in itself, but then it actually is used to focus adults and children. It's also used to calm children down. Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Shea, here to tell you about my exciting new drug-free treatment for children with attention deficit disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What a good commercial. We got they just kids just bouncing off the wall. But my question to you is, aren't kids just bouncing off the wall anyway to begin with? Sometimes are we actually putting children on these medications maybe a little bit premature? This treatment is fast and effective and doesn't use harmful drugs. Watch closely as I apply treatment to the first child. Sit down and study! <laughs> <laughs> you hear of alternative therapies. Some are good, but this one... Sit down and study! I'm not too sure is quite appropriate. Yes, there are medications out there that we use to help focus individuals, calm their brain down a little bit, and should be used potentially as an, an aid and maybe a band-aid, but not maybe something that should be used permanently forever. Are you ready, Mom? <laughs> yes, what is it, sweetie? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Wait a minute, Eric, what is this? Okay, hello, Mrs. Cartman, I'm Dr. Stevens. I understand you're interested in breast augmentation. 
So breast augmentation is a change of the shape of your breast. Big, large, small, reshape it, lift it up, many different meanings behind it. There are a few options. We prefer the saline implants now. They, they can be put either under the chest muscle or on top. Did you have any idea what size breasts you wanted to achieve? So actually that's pretty good information from the doctor. When I was in training and actually a medical student, we had a rotation where we worked with surgeons and saw a couple of plastic surgeries relating to breast augmentation. And sometimes individuals want a certain size, but once you actually do that, it actually doesn't fit well or doesn't look appropriate. The largest size. Eric, I've told you a hundred times, I'm not getting a boob job. Uh, I'm a bit confused here, Mrs. Cartman. Your procedure has already been completely paid for. Whoa. What? Surprise! <laughs> I raised all the money, Mom. Sometimes the implants are actually different sizes because the natural breast tissue is actually different sizes to begin with. It's done! No, Eric, I said I don't want breast implants. Oh my god. Oh Obviously, if the patient does not want a procedure, they can't consent for it. So even if it's paid for, you can't do it. That's called assault. How is he? I believe he's coming to, Doctor. What? <laughs> <laughs> don't, tell <me. laughs> don't tell me Carmen's got breast implants. I mean, he can, he can do whatever he wants. Maybe he just did it because it was already paid for and his mom didn't want him. Well, you did it, Eric. I hope you're happier now. They all said you were very insistent that you said you'd cancel them if they didn't put breast implants in one of us. I, I have fake tits. <laughs> They said that tube is for draining blood while the swelling oh. goes down. When you have surgery, what ends up happening sometimes because of the tissue that's cut, you get a lot of the blood vessels that are cut and the lymph drainage, and you don't want it to get stuck within the wounds themselves because then they'll cause what's something called a seroma. So they, you put these types of drains in there to drain out the fluid. Your breasts are swollen now as a reaction to the implants. Okay, well, now that you see how serious I was, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna go down and get some grocery shopping done. Man? Oh no. I will go to school like this! You guys, something is seriously wrong with my mom. She's acting crazy. <laughs> Are any of your parents acting weird at all? So if you do have a procedure done and you don't like the result, a surgeon can go in and typically remove whatever was done. This is so embarrassing. I have an ear infection. What are you seeing the doctor for? Ear infections, which we actually call otitis media. That's typically because there's fluid that gets behind there and then just sits. If you don't actually get it treated, which is still okay, the eardrum itself can rupture and you'll have the pretty material, AKA pus, come out and then it'll heal on its own. I have, I have AIDS. Come on. Come on. So AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. AIDS is caused by the HIV virus. Interesting that the child would have it. Sometimes you can get it very rarely by a blood transfusion, by mixing blood with somebody who has HIV, as well as sharing needles. But there are a lot of ways that we use medications now to minimize the likelihood of getting HIV. Yeah, that's a pretty bad lice problem there. Good thing they pulled you out of school. Kind of has to do with like poor hygiene or an uncleanly area. What we see nowadays is just kid to kid, maybe sharing a hat or, you know, messing with another kid's hair that might have it. <laughs> I love it. I love the rain. Uh oh. Here comes the medicine. What I love the depiction. Oh my gosh. If you feel itchy, you can definitely have somebody like comb through it, maybe wear some gloves, take a look at it. If you're unsure, get to the hospital, we'll take a look at it. You may have like a bunch of people in hazmat type suits, so they don't want to get the lice and take it home to their family. What's going on? There, just take care, it's right there. Okay, okay, everyone back, just stay back. All right, Karen. I wonder if the officer keeps calling him Karen because of the haircut. Is that like a Karen haircut? Let me know in the comments. I'm not up to date on the, the Karen terminology. We don't want any trouble. Oh. What? It doesn't have to be like this, Karen. Why does he keep... Let us get you some help. 
Can someone please tell me yeah, what's going uh, on? I feel the is same there, like, way, my man. I can speak to so <laughs> no. No. Karen's clear. Very interesting that they were able to use like a blow dart with some maybe some medicine for sedation. That's not a thing, but it maybe should be a thing. Less lethal or non-lethal. Just relax. I need to know what you remember, Karen. <laughs> I started a streaming service to compete with the weed farm across the street. Oh my gosh, we get this a lot in the emergency department where people are either intoxicated or have done some sort of illegal substance that might be laced with something else, which is what we see very often and not the intended result the individual wanted and they might be having a psychotic break or um, a psychosis relating to the medications that they take in or the illegal substance that they took.